Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be raising a complex number to the seventh power. So we have 1 plus square root of 3i to the seventh power and I'll be presenting three methods even though the first method you'll see what I'm talking about. So when you see something like this, isn't it tempting to use the binomial theorem, right? If you go ahead and expand 1 plus square root of 3x to the seventh power, this is what you would be getting. And then replacing x, <laughs> replacing x with i would give you the answer, but it's going to be super painful, as you can see here. So when I asked Wolfram Alpha to evaluate 1 plus square root of 3i to the seventh, it gave me the answer right away, which you'll see in a little bit, but it didn't give me the binomial theorem version of that with i. That's why I had to use a variable x. Anyway, so this is the first method, and as you see, it's not a good one. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the second method then. So we have 1 plus square root of 3i to the 7th power, and some people are going to write this as 1 plus i times the square root of 3, which is the same thing. Okay? Doesn't matter. And this second version is kind of uh, make it looks a little better because when we write things in polar form, you know, we use the cosine theta plus i sine theta, so i goes before the... Uh, number. Anyway, so to be able to raise this to the seventh power, I'm going to be looking at some powers, kind of like a polynomial, right? Whenever we're given something like, oh, okay, x squared is equal to x minus one, and then they ask you to find x to the eleventh power, right? What you do is, or at least one of the methods is, just raise x to different powers, multiply by x, multiply by x, keep finding consecutive powers until you get something simple. So let's go ahead and call this number z. So z is going to be 1 plus square root of 3i. I'm just going to square z. If you square it, you're going to get 1 plus 2 root 3i plus 3i squared, which is negative 3. So z squared would be negative 2 plus 2 root 3i. So z squared is sort of like a conjugate of z, but with a negative 2 in the front. So does that help? Probably, but let's do a little bit more. How about z cubed? Okay, z cubed is going to be z squared multiplied by z. So we're going to mul multiply, we're going to take z squared and multiply by this. And let's go ahead and use distributive property to find z cubed. Negative 2, negative 2 root 3i plus 2 root 3i plus 2 times 3 times i squared, which is negative 6. Awesome. Negative th root 3i and negative 2 root 3i and positive 2 root 3i, they're going to cancel out, leaving us with a real number, negative 8. Awesome. So z cubed is negative 8, but th doesn't this mean that z is negative 2? No. Negative 2 is one of the cube roots of negative 8. We're actually looking at another cube root of negative 8. Hmm. Cube root of negative 8. Interesting, right? Well, since we want to get to the seventh power, it only makes sense if we uh, go ahead and square this to get 6 power and multiply by z, and we should be good to go. But z cubed is a real number. We don't care what z is in this case. So we can just go ahead and plug it in, and that's going to give us negative 8 squared times z. But we actually know what z is. Now we do care. 1 plus root 3i, and the product is going to be the answer. But negative 8 squared is 64, so you can either write it as 64 times 1 plus square root of 3i, or 64 plus 64 root 3i. Doesn't matter, but that will be the answer. Make sense? Okay, so that's pretty much the second method, kind of like a polynomial, raise z to different powers until we get something meaningful. By the way, if you did not go through q z cubed and just kept squaring it, for example, if you took this and square both sides, then you would be getting z to the fourth power, and then that would give you, if you square this, you're going to get 4, and then minus 8 root 3i, and then 2 root 3i squared is going to be negative 12. So this would give you, not that one, this one, negative 8 minus 8 root 3i, and then you could basically take out a negative 8 and write this as negative 8 times 1 plus root 3i. Wait a minute, isn't that z? Yes, it is. So from here, we would get an interesting identity 
z to the fourth power equals negative 8z. And we do know that z does not equal 0, right? Hopefully we do. z does not equal 0. Therefore, I can divide both sides by z to get z cubed equals negative 8 in just a different way. Doesn't matter. z cubed is obviously easier because you can directly calculate it. But in case you skipped it, you would get it at the fourth power. Make sense? Okay, so that is the answer. And notice that how this compares to using the binomial theorem and expanding this to have eight terms and then simplifying each and every one of those because you're going to deal with powers of i, you're going to deal with powers of square root of three, some irrational numbers, and then you'll put it all together. Good luck with that. Okay, but this is the end of the second method. And now let's talk about the coolest, the best, in my opinion, the third method. Okay. So the third method, first of all, what is the problem asking for? We have a complex number, 1 plus root 3i, and we're raising it to the seventh power. Okay, so to be able to say, raise something to a higher power, like if it's second, third, no big deal, just square it or cube it, right? But with power, powers that are larger, especially, you know, something larger than 5 or 6, I don't know, it, it makes sense to use the polar form, or Euler's formula. So what do I mean by that? We can go ahead and remember, we, we talked about this in lecture videos. We can go ahead and write this uh, in r times e to the i theta form. r is the modulus, or the absolute value of z, if this is z, by the way. And theta is the angle. So whenever you graph a complex number on the complex plane, you get two coordinates, the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. In this case, it happens to be like one unit here and root three units. Some people write it this as root three i. Doesn't matter, no big deal. But our number is gonna make an angle like this. And if you know your trigonometry a little bit, this is two, this is one, this is root three. This is going to be pi over three radians or 60 degrees. That's a right triangle. So this will be 30 degrees or pi over six. Now, what are we looking at? Theta is measured like this. So theta is pi over 3. So that gives us the following. 1 plus root 3i becomes 2, which is the modulus, times e to the power i times pi over 3. Now we're supposed to raise both sides to the seventh power, and that would be a piece of cake. Why? Because you can just raise 2 to the seventh, which is 128. Wait a minute, didn't we get 64 something? Don't worry about it, we'll get there. And then from this, we're going to get e to the power i times 7 pi over 3. Now, how do you simplify 7 pi over 3? Well, first of all, 7 pi over 3 is 6 pi over 3 plus pi over 3. Therefore, this is 2 pi. We can totally forget about it and just use pi over 3. So this is the same as 128 times e to the power i times pi over 3. Wait a minute. It brings us back to this number because it had the same angle. Therefore, this is going to be 128 times that. But notice that here, how this turns into 2 times something is we have to write it like 2 times 1 half plus root 3 over 2i. But if you don't know what it is, don't worry, because Euler gave us a really cool formula, e to the power i theta can be written as cosine theta plus i sine theta. Therefore, e to the power i times pi over 3 is going to be cosine pi over 3 plus i sine pi over 3. And cosine pi over 3 is basically cosine 60, which is sine 30, which is 1 half. And this is root 3 over 2i. And when you multiply by 128, guess what? You're going to get the exact same answer that you got here. 64 plus 64 root 3i. All right, so that will be the answer. And this brings us to the end of this video. Here's the result from Wolfram Alpha. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.